Hi, I'm Dr. Carol Francis. I'm a psychologist and a marriage family child therapist, and sometimes it's important to talk about the ugly aspects of life and relationships and people. One of the darker sides of human beings are those individuals who enjoy causing other people pain. Sadism is what we might otherwise call it. You can be related to psychopathology, sociopathology, or it can be related to revenge. An individual has been exposed to far too much abusiveness or has gotten into a mindset either by way of being in a war, being a soldier, being highly traumatized, and sometimes we even associate it with really highly aggressive violent sports or involvement in highly aggressive violent gaming. You know, I'm not trying to say that sports and gaming are bad because there's lots of benefits to those sorts of things, but we nonetheless have to look that some individuals under those circumstances are highly, highly capable of shifting into kind of a sadism where it almost feels good to cause another person pain or to kill them or to shoot them or to talk foul to them or to be mean, to be aggressive with them. It almost feels good to do that. Now one aspect for all of us is that sometimes it feels good to be powerful if we need revenge or we feel powerless or we're just angry. And it feels really good to kind of stomp on someone else's well-being or happiness. It feels good to be disrespectful. However, even for all of us that can have moments like that, if you stand back and you go, oh, I can't believe I did that. I really harmed someone. I need to make up for it. I can't live with the fact that I did that and therefore I have to do something to make it up. And that shift from a moment where it felt good to be sadistic or mean into, ah, oh, that was wrong of me to do, number one, taking ownership, number two, I need to make up for it because I caused damage I need to make up for, in other words, remedy. Then you're probably not in the category that I'm talking about in terms of some people who that's their chronic way of living. They like to see other people squirm. They like to sit there and manipulate them into feeling bad about themselves. They kind of revel into devaluating a person and watching that other person feel lower and lower and lower about themselves. Or perhaps they actually perpetuate abusiveness that's both criminal and can be categorized as truly abusive in all ways, shapes, and form. And guess what? Sadism can occur in the form of verbal interactions, physical interactions, deviousness, manipulation, behind the scenes sort of attacks that you don't even know are happening to you. Now I don't want you to become paranoid or overly cautious about every human being that you meet. Because still even to this day, majority of individuals are well-meaning, even though they may have their moments. But I do want you to be aware that there are the individuals who have embraced the darker side of relating to other individuals in a way that causes damage knowingly and purposefully. And you need to understand that since they do exist out there, you have got to be savvy. If you're dating and you're in that world, you've got to be savvy that there are individuals who will become stalkers, abusers, and worse, even want to kill and rape. So you have to be savvy. Take your time to get to know a person and watch the way they are in situations where they could be mean, but do they handle their anger appropriately, wise and self-respecting, but they also don't engage in needing to be revengeful and antagonistic back. How does that individual handle situations where there is violence, even if it's playful violence in the forms of sports like football or in terms of gaming like Call of Duty, uh, Grand Theft Auto? How do they handle those moments where they can be playfully sadistic and kind of take it out in the gaming or get involved in the violent activity of the sports, but they don't otherwise treat individuals that way because they're respectful, kind, thoughtful, helpful, and they don't overreact out of anger. So you get to know an individual and you watch what they do in all sorts of different situations. There's the old adage that you watch a man and how they treat their mother because that's going to be the way they treat their wife. And that old adage isn't too far off the point. Because if an individual gives themselves a lot of excuse for treating people badly, and that they even use the bad treatment they get from other people as an excuse to do so, they're probably not completely clear about that you don't necessarily do what other people do because your character is in your hands, not in the hands of another person. So watch out for the red flags and be really aware that it's not okay for someone to treat you disrespectfully. But in the same hand, realize that when you're disrespectful, the urge, the automatic urge inside, 
that comes from that primitive brain point is to revenge, to fight or flight. So if you're being aggressive and antagonistic, someone's going to have the inclination to be antagonistic and aggressive back. That they choose not to says a lot about who they are. That you choose to say, I'm sorry, that was so out of line, I need to remedy that. Tells a lot about who you are, and vice versa. But if that person responds with kind of a gleeful wish to revenge and antagonize you or manipulate you, Watch out for the glee and that enjoyment and pleasure that they seem to get. Some interesting experiment was done about how could you possibly detect a sadist in a crowd. And it was determined that individuals, if they were told that they had to be a bug exterminator, and then they were given an experimental opportunity to grind a pill bug to its death in sort of, sort of like coffee grinder. Well, the pill bug was rescued once it was put inside the coffee grinder, but the experimentee didn't know that. And they found that the individuals that got a gleeful pleasure of sadism causing that pill bug a lot of harm and death, but those individuals that wanted to do it more and more and more and really seemed to enjoy it, not just willing to comply with the experimenter, but wanting to go beyond. But those individuals had a makeup that was far different than those individuals that either didn't want to do it and refused, which unfortunately was very few, are those people who didn't want to do it, but they complied because they were told to, which means they're not conscious and not thinking for themselves, but at least they feel the angst of violating their own sensibilities. And those individuals that did it but wanted to stop at the very limit because they just didn't want to continue. So the sadist is the one that got the full pleasure. And then there were three other variations of the theme in terms of when they would be willing or not willing to cause a harmless creature pain. So consider your own experimentation and how you're going to be able to detect when someone's enjoying manipulating you or others or enjoying revenge or enjoying harm or enjoying putting someone down and devaluing another. Because that enjoyment is a really scary component of people's lives, attitudes. And it won't cause them to feel the pain of empathy of what pain and destructiveness they've caused and definitely won't move them into remedy. And what's even a little bit more cautious is individuals that enjoy kind of overpowering someone and manipulating them and causing them distress and pain. They sometimes can be really astute about manipulating their victims into thinking, oh, they're sorry, they won't do it again. They feel really regretful. They didn't realize what they were doing. It was out of their hands. There's not, you know, a million other excuses. Of winning back the victim into this relationship that becomes more and more convoluted. So be careful when someone gets that gleeful pleasure but is really skilled at being able to make you think that they're genuinely sorry, only to return to another sadistic act. A pattern of sadistic acts does not bode well for the future, even if there is a lot of, oh, I'm sorry in between. So be careful of yourself. Love yourself enough to not walk in the path of a sadistic individual. Love yourself enough to get yourself out of the situation. You know you might lose money, time, energy, even self-respect or others' respect. Respect yourself enough to know that you have to extricate yourself out of this really bad path of an abuser who's sadistic, or an abuser or sadistic person who's manipulative. You know, they can be very smart and savvy and even look wonderful parts. It's the old statement of, wolves in sheep's clothing. So take that to heart and take very good care of yourself. Make sure you don't become one of those sadists because we don't need any more destructive people. But make sure that you're not one of their victims too. This is Dr. Carol Francis. Here to help. Contact me. But most of all, take care of yourself.